My wife says that my neighbor's address sign is gigantic, and after looking at his and then looking back at mine, it's embarrassing how small and pathetic mine is. In order to claim the title of best address sign on the block, we need to head to the shop. I seem to have an abundance of mahogany laying around lately, so that's where we're going to start. I marked out a length much longer than my neighbor's, and brought it over to the chop saw to cut it out. Then to get him in the width department as well, we double it up so I could make a panel. The factory edges on this piece were pretty straight, so there was no need to take this over to the jointer. A little bit of glue and just about every clamp I own was all it took to bring this into one solid piece. I went with Tight Bond 3 on this project, hoping that its waterproof features would help this sign last as long as possible out in the elements. It will be under a covered porch, but every little bit helps. After the glue dried, I scraped off all the residual squeeze out with a chisel. And then it was over to the thickness planer to clean up the little bits of glue that I missed and get this as flat as possible. Next we need to bring it over to the table saw to cut it down to its final dimensions. And then while we're over here we might as well cut out the box for the planter that's going to be stuck to the front of this thing. I seem to end up needing to cut bevels on every project and they never quite line up correct, so I finally build a jig to solve that problem. This is almost exactly the same as my spline jig, it's just flipped around 90 degrees. The benefit here is, as long as you cut the bevel pieces on the opposite sides of the jig, it won't matter if your saw blade's off a of hair. Your bevels will still line up perfectly. I labeled one side of the jig A and the other side B, and then also wrote A's and B's on the pieces that needed bevels, so that way I wouldn't screw this up. After all the bevels were cut, I applied a little bit more glue to the beveled edges, and threw them in my corner clamps. They lined up perfectly, for once. Once all the bevels had dried, I took a measurement from the inside and cut out a piece for the bottom of the box. Then once that had dried, Got my spline jig out and took it over to the table saw to add in two splines on each side. I had some leftover bird's eye maple from a previous box project that fit perfectly into the miters. So I marked out a couple triangles and took it over to the bandsaw to cut them out. To finish up the splines, all it took was a little bit more glue pushing them into place, and setting this aside to dry. I pulled out my orbital sander and some 220 grit sandpaper to give this thing a little smoothing over. I needed to collect a lot of mahogany sawdust because I noticed there were some wormholes in these boards that needed to be filled in and I wanted to color match it perfectly. I used a screwdriver to clean out any little bits of debris stuck in there, then threw in a couple dabs of glue and sprinkled on some sawdust that we collected out of the sander. Once that was dry, it was back to the orbital sander to knock it down, and then I broke out a sanding block just to finish it up. And because I add a chamfer to just about everything, I broke out the trim router and gave this a once over. I went with a natural colored Danish oil. I just love how easy this product is to work with and it always makes the wood look beautiful. Once the splines dried, I sanded them flush with the orbital sander. Then it was over to the drill press to put in some drainage holes. You don't want to go any bigger than a quarter inch drill bit on this. Unless of course you like to have all the dirt fall out every time you water your plants. In which case, go right ahead. Finally, coat this up with some Danish oil just like the rest of the sign. Thankfully, the numbers we picked out come with these handy templates, otherwise there was no chance I was going to get this straight. So I stuck them all together with some painter's tape and used that to mark out my distance from the edges to get this lined up perfectly. 
These are floating numbers, and I wanted to make sure the posts went in straight, so I brought this back to the drill press because I don't trust my hand with a drill. The instructions say to fill the holes with silicone, and it had been a while since I used silicone, so I prematurely shot some all over the board. I can assure you that's the first time this has happened. I cleaned everything up, and after 10 minutes I was ready to go at this again. No accidents this time. I just hammered away until everything was in its place and we were all satisfied with the results. The posts on the numbers were designed to go into one inch wood. This is only three quarters, so an angle grinder cleaned everything up. Next, we coated everything in UV resistant, waterproof polyurethane for exterior use. I went with about five coats total to try to slow down any damage the plants and the dirt and water will cause to the wood. Pre-drilled a few holes and then clamped the planter box into place while I screwed it in from the back side. Using all of the wrapping skills I learned from my years of wrapping presents for Santa, I taped everything off so that we can finish off the inside of the box with a little flex seal. I don't know that it's going to help, but I really don't want to remake this sign every few years. So I'm going to add as much waterproofing to this as humanly possible. The wood siding on my house is not exactly flat. I also wanted to make the sign easy to remove in case we needed to change the plants out or clean it out for the winter. So I added a few shims to level things out, and then I put up some industrial strength outdoor velcro. Each of these strips holds up to 15 pounds. This sign with the dirt and the plants doesn't weigh anywhere near that, so everything should be fine. This address sign came out gorgeous, and it is definitely the biggest address sign on the block. I overheard a few women walking their dog say they had never seen an address sign so big. If you like what I built here today, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. If you'd like to build this project, I have detailed plans available on my website listed below. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.